Right, this is a video I'm remaking. Um, hopefully it'll be a bit less sweary than the last time. Um, it's uh, it's more about uh, about Matt Gevens theory about the Roman dodecahedrons as usual. As usual, not really, but there you go. Um, he's put out a new video, um, the first half of which is bollocks. Um, the second half of which is interesting, but not in the way that he thinks it is. Um, so, now, first of all, uh, in my last video about Matt, um, I gave him a fair amount of slack. I thought it was YouTube that was being a cock um, and not letting me uh, comment on his videos because I made a post that uh, got insta-zapped insta by YouTube because it had a link in it. Um, and I tried to make three or four posts to Matt's YouTube channel and they just disappeared then into the ether. Um, turns out that it's not YouTube being a cock. It's Matt, the man who's talking about the scientific method. Who appears to have blocked me because I tried to make a comment on his latest video um, and uh, that also great that's bollocks sorry but that is bollocks next up uh, yeah his video um, so the first first bit is really bollocks um, that's uh, it's just play acting really uh, it's entertaining which you know that's what uh, it's always after isn't it uh, the second part is interesting uh, the Vindolander disc has these holes on it some of which uh, certainly draw to mind the marks that one might make if one was doing a Euclidean demonstration or a Euclidean build of a, uh, of a pentagon. Um, they don't tie up exactly to the pentagon that, uh, that Matt made using the Euclidean method, using a compass, no straight edge. Uh, why do they not uh, tie up exactly to that? It's not really for me to but if they had matched up exactly, I think that definitely have said so. It certainly didn't appear to. Um, that in itself is kind of interesting and would tend to disprove the idea that, uh, that that's what they are. But they are an interesting catch. Uh, well done, Matt, on that one. Um, shame that you totally dropped the ball on... Uh, on on that, really, because what you should be doing is following up on that rather than the idiocy of uh, trying to prove your your theory about the dodecahedrons. There's nothing to tie them to the dodecahedrons. They're the wrong size. Um, yeah, it's yeah. So anyway, um, there's also the little matter that. Uh, Using those marks, they tie up exactly to uh, to Matt's, uh, Matt's perfectly drawn dodecahedron using the Euclidean method. Um, unfortunately, as Matt points out, the wood itself is distorted. So although the, uh, the marks would be consistent with the uh, with with the markings on the wood itself, those marks would, would still be relative even if it's distorted they would not be relative to something that has not been distorted so there's that too and then there's the issue of whether a craftsman who's got to make at least 24 wooden discs with a pentagonal shape on them um, would be using Euclid at all um, I would argue that they wouldn't. Um, I had a quick shot at this. You, you can 
basically divide any circle, any arbitrary circle, using a set of dividers or a compass. Um, you, it's trial and error, but it's much faster than doing Euclid. Um, certainly for small, small numbers of uh, divisions, such as five. In fact, Euclid doesn't go much further than that, really. Um, so here's a quick bit of video of that. Um, it should uh, be noted that I, this is my second, third attempt, third attempt, fourth maybe even. Uh, first, yeah, first attempt I messed up. Um, second attempt I got bang on um, on the first try by pure luck. Um, but unfortunately my camera framing was fucking awful and uh, I was using, you know, using pencil rather than ink and thus it didn't come out on camera at all professional video maker um third attempt was was a bit, mm, bit ropey and uh, the the compass slipped bugger um which left me with the fourth attempt where the pen is held in with an elastic band uh, to keep everything a bit more rigid uh, because the pen doesn't really fit the compass go figure um so have a quick look at that Oh, crikey, you can see me errors. Uh, oh no, oh no, I've got something wrong. Right, so, again, just an arbitrary dimension. So, make us a circle. So, again, we're not going to be dividing by six, we're going to be dividing by a bit more than six. That's probably a bit too much. That might be about right. So we have a starting point. Well, look, we've got a tick mark on here, haven't we? There we go, we've got a tick mark there. So starting point, and we go up, tick. 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 See, we're already not far off a uh, a five a five. What should we call it? So we're going to move it out very slightly more, and we'll start start from the same starting point, same tick mark. Go the other way. That way we can. Let's see where we are. Got this right first time last time. Fucking gutted. That's not far off. Very slightly less, but significantly less time spent pissing about than doing Euclid. So I now know that okay, I can come in very slightly and and tick 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 tick, and we go around. And we've got five. That's how a craftsman would divide. A circle if they absolutely needed to divide some arbitrary circle into five or some other arbitrary number. Um. Okay, that was fun, wasn't it? Um, now, you could argue that uh, that would not be the method that a craftsman would use either. Um, because a craftsman who's got 24 to make would probably have two sets of compasses, possibly fixed, set to the two dimensions that are required. Um, that would be the fastest way to do it. You have one set of compasses set for the, uh, for the radius, and one set of compasses set for the division, the division, the division of the circle. And what that is making out to be this really hard thing to do becomes trivial. It's the work of seconds, um, which is what a craftsman would have. You know, if you're making 24 discs, it's worth spending a couple of minutes to make up a couple of tools to uh, to do this. There's also the fact that a craftsman is going to be working to a set of specifications. In this case, they're working to the specifications of a given pair of dodecahedrons or all of the dodecahedrons as I 
it's more likely to suggest. Um, and yeah, the uh, the the accuracy would have to be pretty much bang on. So you've already got the measurements. Either you've got the the device in your hands, or you have somebody asking you to make a set of discs with uh, a divided by by five uh, pentagonal shape with holes of uh, this dimension, which again, the Vindolander disc holes are too small um, for even the small small the decahedrons. Um, so holes at this dimension, this radius, um, and the central hole being this big on these ones, this big on these ones, this big on these ones. You've got a full set of specs to work from. You don't need to use Euclid. Euclid is how a mathematician might do things. And yeah, while we're on Euclid, um, I'm not buying the brushing up on my Euclid thing either. Um, I've got mathematical flex. Um, Euclid isn't really my thing. It's not my field of uh, field of expertise. But uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, off the top of my head, I don't know how to do this. I know it's in Euclid. I went off to the internet to do it. Um, this is where I looked. This is the information that I had. This is how you do it. That in itself is interesting to the vast majority of people going, who oh, no, just brushed up on me, you click to do it. Makes you look like a cunt. Um, especially if you're you know, using an internet calculator to show the edge lengths of pentagons. Because, you know, if you know how to do it with Euclid, you probably have those numbers in your head. They're not hard to remember either. Anyway. Uh, so there's that. Um, where I think Matt has really dropped the ball on this is that he's he's doing the whole flat earth thing of, you know, it looks like this, therefore it must be this. It's, you know, it's red. London buses are red. Therefore, it's a London bus. But it's got no wheels. No, but it's red and London buses are red. Therefore, it's a London bus. But people can't get on it. It's red. London buses are red. It must be a London bus. But it's a tomato. No, it's a London bus. Etc. Um, and I think that is so, you know, so blinkered into this into this view of um, of his his theory about the dodecahedrons is correct. It's absolutely the only the only possible solution. That he's missed that he's found something very very interesting about another interesting artifact that nobody knows what the fuck it is um what look like construction marks on a disc it's it's actually fascinating and it's just gone past that oh no that's proof of my theory no it's not there's nothing to tie the Vindolander disc to dodecahedrons except that it looks vaguely pentagonal the two holes so anyway there you go that's that um, you can compare Matt's approach to how this works to the discussions I've been having with a guy called um, Alejandro his name I've probably just butchered the Spanish bloke, he's got a theory about the, uh, the Roman dec dodecahedrons, and like mine, it's probably wrong as well. However, he's willing to take on board criticism. Uh, we've had quite a good discussion, um, and it's brought up a lot of things that uh, have changed the way that I thought. Um, so, yeah, that is how, you know, you discuss things. You don't just ban people, or stop playing. <laughs> I'm going to take away my ball and run away. Bollocks. Um, I did promise to Alejandro that I'd kind of go over what my theory about these is. Um, so here it is. Like I said, it's almost certainly wrong. It's very flat earthish. It's, uh, it looks a bit like this, so it must be one of those. Um, so the reasoning that I've got is that uh, the Romans 
used uh, used apprenticeships. Um, I don't know if they were the first. I think the Greeks might have been, uh, but we do have documentation that states that the Romans used apprenticeships. So young lads would go off and they'd be apprentices and then they'd become journeymen and you know they'd go off and become masters of the trade, various trades. And bronze working, metal working in general, but bronze working in particular, enormously important to the Romans. Um, they made everything from it. They made armour from it. They made weapons from it. They made decorations from it. They made door hitches from it. They made Christ everything. Everything was made from was made from bronze. Well, apart from the stuff that was made from pottery, but, you know, and a few tools that were made from iron. So to be a bronze worker, one would become an apprentice, and one would you know, go through all the stuff and do all the do all the boring work, and end up being being you know, a journeyman and a tradesman and all the rest of it. Um, and if you look back at the way that apprenticeships work, certainly, or certainly used to work, uh, when I were a lad, um, apprentices, apprentices in, for example, engineering, would have to make things. So your first thing as an apprentice, uh, becoming a toolmaker, for example, would probably be to make a cube. And you'd make a cube from a piece of raw steel using a hacksaw and some files. And that's pretty much it. Um, and you would have to make a cube to a set of very exacting um, specifications. You'd need to you need to get your get your tolerances right. And then you'd go on to move on to other things. You know, you'd make you'd make tools that you would then use elsewhere. Uh, particularly, you know, tool makers would make a you know, you'd make a set square, and you may may make make a set of angle blocks and. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you would make as an apprentice, and that stuff would follow you around. Now, I would argue that somebody who is becoming a master of the bronze trade probably would go through the apprenticeship and would probably have to would probably have to make things. And something like a cast dodecahedron that's a couple of millimeters thick with balls soldered, soldered onto the corners where it's been smoothed and it's been, you know, this is the kind of thing that you might give to somebody who's reaching the end of their apprenticeship, might be the task that you have to do to prove that you can become a journeyman and go on to be a master of the trade. Of course, I think that's probably wrong because of the discussion I've had with Alejandro. Now, he pointed out that in a lot of photos, and it actually turns out that in almost all of the photos of the dodecahedrons and the fragments of dodecahedrons, there is a very distinctive wear pattern on the balls that are on the corner. It's a planar wear pattern uh, parallel to the planes of the, uh, of the dodecahedron, the faces of the dodecahedron, if you like which tends to imply that the there was a use for the dodecahedron which involved sliding it or sliding something on it but most likely sliding it on a surface that was not too rough because that would grind it down completely um, so perhaps the balls are to reduce friction when sliding this thing on the surface I think it's the sliding movement that really knocks Alejandro's theory out of the out of, out of the ballpark as well. But you should probably go and have a look and see what he reckons. You probably want to use uh, translate on his videos because they're all in Spanish. So I'm sure Spanish is way better than mine. Um, like you know, your Spanish or something. Um, yeah. Um, now, if this was sort of going back to my theory of it being something something to do with uh, to do with you know, apprenticeships. It would have to be something which is a tool, so a tool that uh, somebody who works in the bronze trade uses. Um, that doesn't really advance us very much, does it? I don't know whether it's true. I think it's probably not because you know it looks like this, so that's what it must be. Um, Go figure. So unless you can think of something that a bronze per bronze working person might use, a bronze dodecahedron with different sized circles in it that slides, 
Um, well, I think I'll probably throw that one out with the, with the bath water as well. Truly, utterly, complete bollocks.